Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Last time I visited the good old US of A, Monster High Generation 3 dolls had just released, and we were all collectively losing our minds. I stocked up on everyone's favorite ghouls and just admired them in the box for a while. Ah, such pretty dolls. But now the time has come. As a service to my fellow customizers, let's strip these dolls down to their very bases and take a look at their construction and quality. I'll also be comparing them to the original Gen 1 ghouls. One last thing to mention before we begin. The Generation 1 dolls I own are used, so they're not in brand new condition like the Gen 3 dolls, so it's not exactly a fair comparison. Also, my original ghouls are all from different lines, they aren't the basic first release versions of the original characters. You probably already know that, but it's worth pointing out. If you want a better look at the doll itself, including the clothes and accessories and whatnot, there are toy channels out there that do reviews for that sort of thing. I'm skipping over that and mostly focusing on the body and faces. Although I will say the new doll's clothes are just wonderful. Adorable designs, super cute and specific to each character, I love them. And of course, you'll want to hold on to those new clothes if you plan on sewing outfits for your customs. With new body types comes a need for new patterns, so they could come in handy. Monster High dolls have been awesome from the very beginning, and there's a good reason they were so popular among kids and artists alike. Each character has a unique facial mold and different skin tones. And it seems the new generation takes that individuality even further by changing the proportions of each doll to be unique to that character. There are pros and cons to this, of course. The obvious pro being we all love to see variety, it's great. And the con being that different body types make sharing clothes difficult. Whereas the Gen 1 ghouls can borrow from each other's closets with no problem, Gen 3 is not a one-size-fits-all situation. It's true, the patterns you used for Gen 1 customs are useless now. You'll have to tweak them considerably or make new ones. And not just for Gen 3, but for each character in Gen 3. Well, some of the loose-fitting clothing like hoodies and stuff might still work, but you know. Let's look at their faces up close, too. I just wanted to take a good look before I wiped them clean and removed their identities forever. <laughs> Poor things. In general, it seems the Gen 3 girls have sweeter expressions and larger eyes. The details are so crisp and nice. Look, they even drew the hairs in the eyebrows. It also seems that their faces are printed on straighter. A couple of my Gen 1 girls have some eye wonk going on. The oldies have a place in my heart for sure, but I also adore the new faces. They're both fantastic in their own way. Alright, no more procrastination. Let's prep the bases. I was simply going to prepare all the dolls off camera, but I noticed something as I was working. I found that the Gen 3 doll heads are much more difficult to pop off. You know the drill, soften the vinyl in hot water first before popping it off. I'm an old hand at this. But even while trying to be extra careful, I managed to break three out of the seven new dolls. That's a 43% neck breaking rate. Not good. <laughs> Whereas I broke zero of the original dolls. Here's my advice. Take the Gen 3 dolls in two steps. Heat it enough to tug over the first lump in the neck peg. Then stick it back in the boiling water. Wait a good 20 seconds or so and tug it the rest of the way off. Don't twist because it seems the neck peg is more brittle and prone to breaking if you twist. So try to tug it off straight. This should give you the best shot at removing the doll's head. As for my now broken new dolls, Something tells me I'm going to have to make a how to fix broken necks video soon. <laughs> the hair was also more difficult to remove. This could be due to a variety of factors. One, the heads don't squish as easily as Gen 1, so I assume the walls of the vinyl are thicker. And two, the glue is fresh and clean in there because these are new dolls, so it isn't as easy to grab chunks of hair. Older dolls, you know, they might have been stored in a warehouse for some time or left out in the sun at some point, so the glue inside their head melts and becomes a tangled mess, which makes it easy to extract. I did find that this angled pair of needle-nosed pliers was a great shape for getting into the new heads.
Another reason for Monster High's success no doubt comes from their ability to pose. Even though they're just fashion dolls, they're capable of a pretty decent range of motion. How do the Gen 3s compare? Almost identical, I'd say, with the exception of the leg moving backwards at the hip. But honestly, same. <laughs> What's really exciting is this new point of articulation they've added up here, on the torso. This lets the doll twist. Check out these dynamic poses. The gesture. The sass. We owe it all to this new joint. The doll's joints come apart in the same way as Gen 1, at the elbows and wrists. At least, I think they do. They used to include this image on the old boxes. I found no such graphic on the new boxes. The thicker pegs make them slightly easier to grab, which is a plus. Here's all the doll bases lined up! Aren't they gorgeous? Let's transition back to Gen 1 a couple times for comparison. Immediately I notice what a range and height there is between the characters now. Frankie is so tall! And the weight of each character is noticeably different and unique. Gen 3 looks much more like a group of actual people, which is really neat. The biggest change that I appreciate personally is that they downplayed the swayback design of the original dolls. Many, many years ago when I saw Monster High dolls for the very first time, I remember thinking it looked kind of strange, although I did eventually get used to seeing it. But the swayback can also cause problems with the clothing. Sometimes clothing just doesn't sit right because the doll was pushing her little tummy forward, you know what I mean? Gen 3 still has design decisions reminiscent of the original dolls, so it still feels like Monster High, but just with thicker limbs and exaggeration in different places. The new dolls all have slightly larger hands, and their feet aren't quite as high up on their tippy toes. I think the artists behind Gen 3 did such a stellar job reimagining our favorite ghouls. Let's look at each doll base side by side again. Here's something that's a pretty big deal for customizers, molded on details. For kids and collectors, details like this are great because they add character and feel unique to the doll. As an artist, though, I prefer my canvas blank. Just start me off with a simple, rudimentary body, please. For this reason, I want to point out that Claudine has molded on fur at the wrists, ankles, and on her face. Laguna's forearms have scales and fins, although the leg fins are removable. Frankie obviously has a robotic leg. It's also worth noting that her stitches are difficult to remove. Even with the combination of sanding and acetone, I couldn't get her leg tattoo off. Cleo has mummy wrappings on her forearm and left leg. Now let's compare faces. You guys, the faces are so good. I remember being blown away by Monster High's facial sculpts when they first came out. I'd never seen a line of dolls with different faces per character. Like, most doll lines had the same sculpt but stamped different paint jobs on top, you know? To keep the cost of production down. Anyway, it looks like they've outdone themselves again. The sculpts look amazing. They're clean and defined. Just like with the bodies, I think the team at Mattel did a wonderful job keeping the essence of each character's face intact through the redesign. For example, Cleo's sharp nose ridge and almond-shaped eyes are still recognizable as her. And it looks like most of the Gen 3 dolls are sculpted to have subtle smiles and bigger eyes. As a customizer, it's wonderful to have this variety amongst all the combined dolls now. Want pouty, neutral expression lips? Choose an older head. Want to draw big anime eyes? Choose a newer head. Personally, I love making happy, friendly-looking characters, so the smiley Gen 3 heads are winning me over, I must admit. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest change made to any character is Laguna here. She's pink now! I love both versions, and personally, I think she looks super cute in pink. Frankie's skin tone has drifted from mint green to more of a light cyan color. And Gulia has made a big jump from gray to mint green.
If we look at the complete lineup of dolls, they've kept a good balance of colors within the group as a whole, even if they swapped some skin tones around. You know me, I love saturated colors, so I'm delighted with the addition of a darker pink doll. That's all, folks! Hope you found the comparison interesting and helpful. I've never processed that many dolls at the same time before. Now I just have a pile of doll parts. <laughs> I wonder what customs they'll become in the future. What are your thoughts on the dolls? Did you notice anything about Gen 3 that I didn't talk about? Leave a comment, and thank you for watching! Stay artsy! Annyeong!